Muraho, I'm Albert. Albert is from Rwanda, and that's where he saw a big problem. Small businesses couldn't compete with big businesses because they didn't have the money, the exposure, or the reach. When his employer exited the market, leaving dozens of people jobless, Albert decided that it was time to make a change. He hired back his old team and built a business for the community. Vuba Vuba! Vuba Vuba means fast fast in our Kinyarwanda language. This is an app that delivers food and grocery fast. And at the same time, they help small businesses to make money. We helped many entrepreneurs get started and make a living. They also give many drivers the work they need through food delivery. This is a unique idea, and we need more people like Albert who come up with smart solutions fast. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're already in the city, but we immersed you a little bit more into the city of Kigali and other towns around. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to bring to the stage Albert of Vuba Vuba. <laughs> Booba booba. Let's booba, go. Booba. Hello, Rwanda. We've all been in this situation where you're stuck at home or in the office. You have no time for your daily shoppings. And all you need in such a case is a reliable partner who'll do it as if it was yourself. In other words, all you need is Vuba Vuba. Vuba Vuba is a Kinyarwanda world. That means fast, fast. And we started back in January 2020 by bridging a gap that was in shopping sector between shopping and delivery to bridge it between our sellers and buyers where we provided a reliable platform that even assured a secure and fast delivery. Since we started, uh, we decided to offer that through a mobile app that is available for you, the users, available on both stores, App Store and Play Store. But because we didn't want to miss a single detail about your order, we also provided a merchant app and a riders app, so every information is transmitted digitally. We're currently in three cities of operations in Rwanda, Kigali, Musanze and Rubavu. And since we started, you know we've had some good traction in only three years of operations and some of the good numbers we've had. But of course, one wonders um, how we make money. We have two revenue streams. We charge uh, a 20% average commission on the transaction that goes through our platform. And currently, daily 15,000 US dollars. We also charge a 1.5 delivery fee for every order delivered and currently doing 1,200 deliveries every day. This is a sample of our, um, an overview of a day, September 24th. Where we had, uh, we helped 149 merchants to at least transact uh, once on our platform, and we generated more than 1,400 um, orders this particular day. Of course, this is something we uh, couldn't have done uh, without a proper growth we had over the three years. 2021, we grew by 104%. 2022, we grew by uh, 46%. Uh, this being said, we have an amazing super team, and some of them are already in the room. 37 full-time employees for the moment, around 50 part-time employees, and more than 120 delivery riders in the three cities. Uh, we're looking at some of the next steps. Uh, first, we want to um, improve the supply chain between the farmers and the market. And through the restaurant we already operate with, so the produce gets to the market still fresh through the cold chain we introduce. We also want to bring our solution to our brothers and sisters in Africa, starting from Burundi and the Congo. We also want to have smart partnerships with platforms like Alibaba to allow wholesalers in Africa to purchase their products. Thank you for your kind attention, ABS family. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Q&A with the judges, starting with Joe, Diane, and Ubuku. Okay. Hey, Albert. Hello, Joe. Um, your, your business model is actually pretty familiar to me. Uh, in, we have similar types of business in China. We also, uh, I've seen some businesses in, in um, Southeast Asia as well. And uh, 
I do have a question. I just did some math. You did, um, you do 15,000 US dollars every day in uh, volume, GMV, right? And NMV. over, yeah. over 1,200 uh, orders a day. So that works out to be about $12 per order. Yes. Is that sufficient economics for, uh, when you add in the logistics costs of, you know, the rider, the, all that? Can you break down the unit economics for us? Uh, definitely. Um, so when we do, uh, we usually get profitable when an order is past five, doll five US dollars. That's when we start being profitable if we break down the cost, operational cost that we have. So one of the things that we do is we want to encourage people to order in bulk. Because if you look at a normal, um, probably plate or a pizza cost in Kigali is around um, eight, eight dollars. So what you do is we encourage people to order in bulk. So we have bigger basket size, which will make sense in terms of, in terms of profitability. Um, we also charge a delivery fee, but most of, uh, through, uh, you've, you've very much been in, in, in the delivery industry and logistics. The delivery fee covers almost the entire um, cost of, uh, of delivering. So we push our best to get, you know, more commission on the, on the sales that we get. That is covers our day-to-day -day business and, and allows us to expand. Mm -hmm. um, so this, this is really a service for the high end. Uh, but in businesses like this, you need to, you need to order volume uh, that spread across your fixed investment costs. So w how big is this market? I mean, if th this is just sort of, if the top, only top 10%, whatever percent, small population use this service, how do you, how do you get bigger? Um, definitely, if you look at the population in Rwanda and the smartphone penetration, internet access, it's not itself as a business won't um, get us to the next level. That's one of the reasons that we're introducing more uh, business models, including helping farmers. Because if, if you look at uh, produce that get perished before they get to the market, mm. there is a huge number of that. So it's a new uh, revenue stream that we're doing. And the new revenue stream we are working on uh, as, as part of the next stage as well, we want to um, uh, leverage the app visits we got on a daily basis and have in-app adverts that are going to be sold to um, uh, corporate companies that are already in the ground and, and uh, when we expand out of, the, out of the Rwandan market as well, which is one of the things we have on our, um, on our pipeline because the solutions so far on the food and on-demand delivery industry in Rwanda has really been going well and we want to replicate you know, some of these because uh, we've also realized some of the cost in the food and, and, and e-commerce delivery, the cost of acquiring customers is usually quite high but when you go through, when you strengthen your operations before and you have proper processes, the cost goes quite high because, uh, quite low, because the word of mouth really works well. People really talk about the good service they, they, they receive. So we look forward to um, doubling numbers yeah. as we, people order in groups, more services, and expanding to um, a few more markets. Okay, great. I'll let my other judges ask questions. Uh, if we have time, I may circle back f for Definitely. final question. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you, you know, and then I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be asking questions today because I'm actually one of your active customers. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the support. And, and as Joe said, uh, the ta your, your target market is really upmarket, affluent, and digital savvy population, which is tiny. In Rwanda, it's still tiny because we only have maybe 25, 30% uh, uh, smartphone penetration. So this is really, you know, a constraint to your growth. And f I'm wondering, how do you manage to become relevant for the mass market? And I've seen similar, uh, similar business models in Southeast East Asia, where people do not only delivery for food, for, you know, whatever goods, but they also do uh, taxi hailing, you know, public transport and stuff like that. Because for you, to become relevant to the you know, average Rwandan, it will take you maybe 10 years. And I've also looked at your numbers, they don't look great. So do, are you thinking of adding more services? Uh, because your app is beautiful, great UI, great UX, but it's limited and it's really addressing people like me and I'm not even, I'm the top 1% uh, in this country. So how do you become relevant for other people? Um, that's, that's very true. Um, so one of the, one of the uh, point we're working on. Um, one is definitely adding more services and that, I take that as a feedback of, of things that you need to uh, be adding on a daily basis. Uh, but we believe, because for the moment, one of the, one of the mistakes 
you know, some of the, some of the e-commerce companies do is you, you try to grow faster than the industry which we, where you are. If today uh, I was meant to probably invest a marketing budget of, let's say, uh, 5,000 US dollars, it won't really change much in terms of numbers that we acquire. So what you choose is to first grow with uh, the, the, the current system that we have, first serve them perfectly, and then after that we start adding now more services. I'll give an example of, of, uh, of uh, some of the services we want to introduce as well. We, uh, through the delivery uh, riders that we have, we have more than um, 120 delivery riders, so we want to start a financing model as well that allow them to get uh, bikes on credit. You know, we all want to shift from uh, a fuel fleet to an electric bikes. So when we start that, we get a, 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 a financing partner who finance that, but then we be the collateral for the drivers, and we get a slight margin on that. It's not going to be super game changer, but we add as well on the, on the parcel delivery. If today I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm at the office, I don't want to buy a new charger, but I left my charger at home, what happens is I need someone who could eventually uh, deliver that to my office or home without, you know, buying a new one. Of course, that comes with a cost. Uh, that's, you know, one of the reasons that uh, we, we maximize on the segment that we have and, and perfection it to um, other markets. Tackling on, on, uh, on um, uh, the very, uh, I'll call them low-income low people for the moment is we want to make our product quite accessible. It's in the pipeline, but not really now. Uh, we want to have uh, the basics be done on USSD for uh, future funds, but it's, to be honest, not something that we plan to do um, in the next uh, couple of months. It's a plan that is um, ahead of time. But, but looking at your growth, it's flattening, and I can imagine that during the COVID years, you know, we grew very fast, but now your curve is flattening. We, we don't expect any new COVID, right? So, <laughs> We're and for such not, a business, you need not. exponential growth. So I don't understand how, what, you, what, what you're doing to make, again, the, the curve uh, yeah, yeah, great uh, fast. Yeah, K K Kigali, Kigali, if I look at uh, Kigali itself, it has a bit less than 2 million people. And if you are doing um, 1,200 deliveries every day, to me that means there's a still a big portion of, of smartphone users that we haven't really tapped into. Um, because our, our current database is, is around... Uh, so what are you doing to actually... Yes, we are introducing more services, um, including loyalty programs for people who've used our services once and, 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 uh, and stepped out. First of all, we want to leverage the 65,000 database to come back by incentivizing them uh, in terms of uh, services that we offer, making sure that our deliveries are quite fast than what we do, and adding more, more um, sellers on the platform. Because currently we have about 500, but the restaurants in Kigali are beat above 700. So if we add more services on, on the platform, then it acquires more customers. But I, I have to agree that, you know, some of the um, uh, low-income people, we're still looking at strategies that we should tackle them, which is group ordering. Um, if someone spends usually around $1.5 probably for lunch, if you group uh, as 10 people and we offer free delivery, usually probably one person has a smartphone, now that you haven't got in the USSD, you're able to bring an order to us that is quite valuable in our unity economics, and you're serving about 10 people at the same time. My first question is, um, you used to work for Jumia, right? Yes, that's correct. I used to okay. work for Jumia. Why do you think they failed in, uh, in Rwanda? Um, they didn't really fail, but the market was quite small for them. Um, and, and when they started, you know, it, as, as all entrepreneurs, if I'm going to, I think the same question was asked before, if I'm meant to start a new market, and I believe that I'm getting... Um, a graduate from, from, from a famous university is going to get, be a game changer. If you don't first have an understanding of the market, um, when, when, when they started for a very long time ago, I think the investment, the amount of investment, the return wasn't within the time frame that, that was, was provided. And one of the things that, you know, raising money, when you raise funds most of the times, you have understanding of the person you're raising from, but sometimes when you get along, it might be um, a, bit, a bit difficult. So they had to, uh, when they went public, they, want to focus, they wanted to focus on bigger markets, what they usually call bigger markets. So they existed Rwanda, um, Tanzania, and, and Cameroon uh, back in 2019. But my, myself as a team, uh, you know, believed that we can revive um, a business from there. And, you know, processes that we, 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 we understand the market more than anyone else, and we have the right um, skills to, to, to do the business. 
So what are you doing differently from what they did in order to ensure the market works for you? Um, we, we have uh, everything is being developed locally from the tech team. One of the things that I didn't um, fully agree with was having a tech team that is central looking for the, for the entire continent being held outside of the continent. But now everything is being developed locally, so the solutions and releases of the app are quite faster for our users. Um, that's, that's the number one thing. Number two is uh, we, we really uh, focus a lot on the operational processes. Something we've tested and it worked. I believe the, first, the best marketing tool is best operations, uh, which is sometimes um, a bit different because if I throw out a bigger budget in marketing without refining really operations, it, 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 it really affects people. Thirdly, um, we, we value our delivery riders because they are the face of the company uh, and they're the ones to interact with the customers. So every time they feel uh, confident, the growth is quite um, exponential and they represent you know, your brand and acquire more customers. One of the things we've, we've, we, we did that we, we wanted to do even before, uh, but it wasn't possible with Jumia, is we had our delivery riders be our brand ambassadors. So we incentivize them to acquire new customers. Every time you're going to deliver, every time you wait in a restaurant, if someone has time, speak to them, give them a sort of discount to use our services, and that marketing, has, that strategy has really worked uh, well so far. Okay, so tell me what the next um, 24 months looks like for Vuva. Vuba. Uh, the, next, the next 24 months, uh, we uh, part of the, uh, the growth process, we want to reactivate some of the uh, customers that we probably lost. Uh, I saw uh, Mr. Fred Swanika in the building. Uh, he gave me a comment in the, in the semifinals because the pizza, he used to order pizza and it was delivered cold. So we had to invest more to acquire Telmo bags that are currently allowing us to acquire new customers to, to reactivate uh, the customers we had. And, and number two is we have uh, many of uh, uh, the cancelled orders because of product and availability in different stores, which is why we want to uh, bridge the gap between the fleet of uh, farmers and, and consumers. We, we've already uh, spoken to a couple of people to get to understand a refrigerated van and in some of the cold rooms around the city because if you have that, uh, a restaurant will get it uh, quite uh, lower and the orders will be quite faster. Different focus groups we've had, we lose, we lose clients because of uh, late deliveries. Uh, you know. And uh, you know, the next 24 months as well, I uh, say that we want to expand to uh, neighbor, neighbor countries, including Burundi and, and Republic of Congo because if we tap into the first um, uh, tier of customers, then uh, it gives us uh, quite uh, strong unity economics. And when do you expect to get into those markets? Uh, we're planning to do second quarter of next year. Okay. One final question. Who is your competitor? Um, we, our biggest competitor currently are the normal motor riders, the Boda riders, because motors are usually a common transport here. So what happens is a, a person usually have, has uh, their bo no, normal border that they call uh, to pick something up and, and have it delivered. We also have two competitors uh, locally. Uh, one is called uh, uh, Rush Foods, uh, and another one is called uh, uh, Pozo Delivery, uh, currently on the planet, on, on the continent, on, on the, in the country. But we look at our biggest competitors in the market share as the normal motor riders, uh, because usually in, in the neighborhood, many people have, uh, you know, that one called uh, Boda Guy to have uh, things delivered. Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned the the motor riders because when I arrived at the airport coming out into the city uh, I saw a lot of motorcycles riders in blue helmets and red helmets and they are providing transport uh, to people uh, so presumably those are the people that you're referring to right they could easily also switch to delivering uh, food and other items for people is that right that's right I, I hope you happen to see a uh, bike did you uh, sorry? Did you see a Vua Vua bike on the road? No, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen the green helmets yet. Okay. But I would suggest that those blue helmets and red helmets also are a com competition from a cost structure standpoint because your riders, you have to pay the riders enough to compete against these, these other uh, motor Definitely. transport companies. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much.